Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyanind and this is part 8 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In our previous video, we started discussing about the triggers in Azure Data Factory and we discussed about scheduled triggers and event-based triggers. In this video, we are going to discuss in details about the tumbling window trigger. So if you haven't watched my previous videos re related to trigger, I would highly recommend to watch that video before watching to this one. All right, so let's get started with tumbling window triggers in Azure Data Factory. All right, so tumbling window triggers are fired at a periodic time interval from a specified start time while retaining the state. It's more like similar to what we have got in the schedule based triggers. However, there are some properties available in tumbling window trigger which makes it di distinguished from schedule based triggers. Now, what are these properties are? Uh, the stumbling window trigger supports one to one relationship only. So as we discussed in the schedule based trigger, we can have one schedule based trigger that can execute multiple pipelines and vice versa. However, in case of tumbling window trigger, we can have one trigger to execute only one pipeline like it, it is going to be one to one relationship. Now, pipeline runs can be scheduled for a window in the past also. Now, this is a very unique feature. Uh, so let's assume we are processing a uh, data which is time based so let's say uh, there is an iot device which is sending data on every hour and we want to run or we want to process that data using pipelines so let's say we have got the data from past date also so with help of tumbling window triggers what we can do is we can some we can set up the parameters which is kind of advanced discussion however based on that settings we will be able to set up the data processing window for you know for past dates also that is a unique feature of this tumbling window trigger now third feature is uh, pipelines pipeline run can be scheduled for all windows from a specified date without gaps so as i mentioned we can specify it from a past date and then let's say if we are setting up it to execute a pipeline on every one hour so from that past date till the time we are you know specifying it it will continue to execute the pipeline without any gaps now last and which is very most important feature is we can build a dependency chain that makes sure triggers are executed only after a successful execution of another trigger within the service so uh, in order to understand this, let's go on the Azure Data Factory Studio and we will understand it over let's there. Let's go ahead and go into the Manage tab, click on the triggers and say New. And this time we are going to create a tumbling window trigger. Uh, all right. So now if you if you notice when we were creating schedule based trigger in our previous video, we were able to select a start date and we were able to select a time zone according to the date or time that we want to select. However, when we are talking about tumbling window trigger, the default time that we are going to get is a UTC time zone and accordingly we will have to adjust. Now, at this point of time, whatever configuration options that we have got, it is quite similar to what we have got in the schedule based trigger. So let's say I want to execute a pipeline, uh, let's say at every one hour. So all we need to do is create a trigger like this. We can say occurrence at every one and then say hour and we can just hit create and it will create a trigger. So let me do one thing. I already have a pipeline. And if you remember in our previous video, we attached a, oops, we attached a trigger with this. And this is the trigger one that we created. And also if I go into the monitor tab and let's see if it was working. So I, I created it when I created my last video and you can notice since then every day on the same time, this pipeline is executed by that particular trigger. Okay, so coming back to that uh, tumbling window trigger that we have just created, what I will do is I will detach this particular trigger from here. I'll just say detach and then I will add this new particular trigger and say hit OK. And then I'll just go ahead and publish. Okay, we have got some there. Cannot be created and contain no pipeline. Okay. Say stop, okay, close and publish. All right, so it is going to publish. And in this way, what we have done is we have attached that tumbling window trigger with this particular pipeline that we have, uh, that we already had. Now, what does it mean is 
this particular trigger is going to execute this pipeline at every one hour all right now let's talk about all those properties which we discussed in the ppt in in the practical format how how these you know these kind of properties works in the tumbling window trigger so if i come back here so the first property says uh, it supports one to one relationship only that means one trigger can be associated with one pipeline only so if i just go ahead and create a duplicate pipeline i'll just hit clone and uh, it will just create a new data fact a new pipeline within data factory i'll just go ahead and publish and let's wait for a few more seconds okay come on okay now once it is published if i go ahead and click on triggers and try to you know attach that existing trigger that we you know attached with pipeline one you would notice that that option is not even available here because you know tumbling window triggers supports one to one relationship only so if that uh, trigger is already associated with one pipeline we cannot associate with another pipeline now talking about the another one pipeline run can be scheduled for the windows in the past so uh, i mean this particular feature might require some additional settings that uh, might take time so i'll just go ahead and show you one you know option right now so if i hit new and then say tumbling window trigger now while creating tumbling window trigger you might see there is an option to select past date is also enabled so what does it mean is when we are creating a tumbling window trigger we will be able to set it from a past date now uh, as i gave an example in the beginning of this video let's say we are handling a data which was time sensitive and we are getting it from a, a, a past date then we can set up this tumbling window trigger to run based on that past date till whatever date we are specifying however it will require to do some you know set up a lot of logic in the pipeline so that we can actually attach that that time and this tumbling window trigger time now i'm not going to cover that in this video for now but uh, at this point of time it is good to know that that particular feature is available when it comes to tumbling window trigger now talking about third one uh, it can be scheduled for all windows from a specified start time without any gap now what does it mean is as i mentioned if i'm setting up this particular pipeline for let's say every one hour then what it what it is going to do is it will run at every every hour so for example let's say it is running from 9 to 10 as a one window now what it will do automatically it will create another window from 10 to 11 then another window from 11 to 12 it is not going to miss or it is not going to create any gap between the time slots and it will run at each window till the end specified time now how we are specifying our end time we can just hit this in specify in time and we can uh, you know specify a in date time over here now talking about the last one which is most important we can build a dependency chain that makes sure that a trigger is executed only after the successful execution of another now again when we were scheduling when we were creating a schedule based trigger let's say we scheduled it like this so over there it will execute it anyway whether uh, you know this window was executed or not schedule based in schedule based trigger if we have scheduled these this frequency it will automatically execute and run the pipeline it, it won't check whether a particular instance was successful or not but in case of tumbling window trigger we have option to define the dependency so what we can do is we can set up a dependency that will check so let's say it is going to execute 10 to 11 window but before executing this it will check whether the previous window which was from 9 to 10 whether it was executed successfully or not if that ex if that execution was successful only then it will execute this next time slot same goes apply with all the windows that is a dependency we can specify now this dependency we can specify in two forms we can specify this dependency using a self trigger itself like whatever trigger that we have created to run this particular pipeline in this uh, time slot we can define the dependency of this trigger itself i mean a self dependency or we can create another trigger that will be attached as a dependent trigger on this one so let's see that in practical to understand this tumbling window trigger dependency in practical let's uh, make some changes in the existing pipeline to create a scenario 
So for now, let's assume this pipeline one that we have got, it's for loading a data. Let's say we are getting some sales data and we have we are loading it using this pipeline. So I'll just say loading sales data. And then the second pipeline that we have, it is for processing the data. Oops. Processing data. Okay, now we want to create a dependency that once data is loaded, then we want to execute this particular pipeline. However, if the data load got failed somehow, then we don't want to execute this processing data pipeline. So how can we do that is, let's say we are selecting this particular uh, pipeline where we are loading the sales data. I'll go ahead and click on trigger. Now I'll go ahead and detach this trigger that I created and I'll go ahead and create a new trigger. I'll say tumbling window load data trigger load data trigger and select the tumbling window trigger and let's say I want to you know run it starting from Monday 9th of October 9 a.m. let's say 9 I'll just select the 9 0 every day at the 9 a.m. and hit OK and frequency let's assign it at every one hour now uh, let's keep uh, let's not specify this in, in time right now now i can just go ahead and you know create this trigger now what it is going to do is it is going to execute this particular loading sales data uh, pipeline at every one hour starting from 9 a.m in the morning and i'll just go ahead and hit ok and make sure it we are publishing it at the end now furthermore what i will do is in this processing data pipeline i will create another trigger and i'll just say new and then i'll say tumbling window process data now here again i will select tumbling window and this time i'm going to select a time starting from monday but i'll select it from 10 let's see or let's keep it from nine also i'll share one more scenario and hit okay and again it is going to be on hourly basis Open. then what i need to do is if i go into the advanced option i have an option to add dependencies i'll just hit new and here i will be able to see the first trigger that i created for loading data trigger i'll just add that and hit okay now before hitting okay there are two options that that you can see offset and window size so let's understand that also for now i'll just go ahead and hit okay and let's say i'm going to publish it so cannot be activated as no pipelines I'll just stop the earlier one that we created and hit publish now while it is loading let's understand how does this dependency offset and size of particular you know time slot works so all right in order to understand how does this dependency offset and dependency size uh, works in tumbling window trigger let's go on a microsoft page uh, there is an example given by microsoft with this visual example we can easily understand how it is working so let's first talk about dependency offset now here in the first example you can see there are two triggers trigger a and trigger b now in this example trigger a is dependent upon trigger b so how it is working is time slot of 10 to 11 of trigger a is dependent upon trigger b's 10 to 11 time slot so here a dependency is in the parallel time slot so offset which is defined it is zero because it is depending in, in the parallel time slot however talking about this particular example here 10 to 11 time slot of trigger a is dependent upon 9 to 11 time slot of trigger b which is one hour earlier so this actually works what we are trying to achieve in our current scenario so in our current data factory we have created these two pipelines so let's say loading data is happening from 9 to 10 am and then what we want is this processing data should execute after 10 am so that it is not overlapping with each other so i'll what we can do is i can select this processing data pipeline 
go into the new and edit select that particular trigger that we created for processing data pipeline go into the advanced setting option and as we can see here it is defining an offset as minus one hour same we are going to do it here so i'll just say minus one so let me just yeah minus one let's add zero before one so we can add a minus one what is it representing is you need uh, we are what we are telling to this particular trigger is you need to check back one hour of whatever particular uh, you know dependency we are defining uh, in this particular uh, trigger so before executing this process data pipeline it will check this particular trigger in its minus one hour window and then only if that window got executed successfully then only it will execute this process data pipeline so here we can hit okay now let's understand what is the window size window size is again uh, very simple so in case of minus one hour what what is there is that time slot dependency time slot is one hour only however in this scenario we can see 10 to 11 time slot is dependent upon 9 to 11 time slot which is two hour size so it, it's quite possible right because let's say loading data loading sales data might be taking two hours however processing data is taking only one hour so in that scenario what we can do is instead of defining 0 1 here we can define the size as two hours so it will go back one hour but it will check the size of two hours so that we can define here if we if we have such kind of you know dependency and accordingly it will work so i at this point of time i can hit okay and it will work like this now talking about self dependency as i mentioned we can define the trigger that we have created as a self dependency so what i can do is if i just go ahead and hit delete this one and say new one i can select this particular trigger itself so whatever trigger that we are you know scheduling it for processing data pipeline we can select that trigger itself and you know we can assign a dependency here now here is very you know you know common thing which is to understand because we are defining a self dependency and this trigger is supposed to be executed at every one hour so if we are trying to set up a dependency then it is going to be minus zero one by default i hope it is you know easy to understand is you can understand it by this example we are defining a self dependency so what we want is before executing 10 to 11 window it should check whether 9 to 10 window was executed or not that that is how it is working and that is why we are defining minus one hour as an offset in the dependency so these kind of dependency we can dis, you know define when it comes to tumbling window trigger uh, let's talk about some other options also available within uh, tumbling window trigger first one is nothing but the delay so with help of delay we can define some hours minutes or seconds here that delay can be there uh, so let's say a trigger got executed and based on the dependent trigger another trigger is supposed to be executed so there we can add a delay of one or two minutes and then this trigger will execute the pipeline this is how it is supposed to work then talking about max concurrency so let's say these tumbling window triggers are supposed to run in the time slots and there might be some possibility that but same pipeline is running for multiple time slots together so let's say there are two or five pipelines now running in the parallel for a different time slots so to optimum use the azure data factory what we can do is we can limit the concurrency and let's say we want only two pipelines to run in parallel or two triggers to be executed in parallel so we can define it here then uh, retry policy let's say due to some reason a particular you know trigger got failed or a particular pipeline execution got failed so the dependent trigger is still waiting so what we can do here we can define a retry policy and uh, it, it can go ahead and retry so let's say uh, i'm telling it to retry four times it will retry four times to execute it again now what should be the gap between those retry that is something we can define here so let's say i want this retry should be there uh, it is in seconds so let's say i'm saying 60 so it should retry after each 60 seconds and it will retry for four times to execute the trigger so this is how these options will be very helpful when it comes to tumbling menu trigger so i hope uh, you like the information uh, it was very detailed uh, discussion about the tumbling window trigger if yes please go ahead and hit the like button and do subscribe to my youtube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that i upload
If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out me at achieversdataengineering at gmail.com or do let me know in the comments. I would love to answer that. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.